this time on Star Trek Gold Key Theater. Star Trek, the Cosmic Cavemen. As they ply the endless seas of space, the crew of the Starship Enterprise continually weigh anchor at strange and dangerous ports of call. But none so unusual as the planet Nisan, where the fire is magic, the wheel unknown, and cavemen reign supreme. Scotty Bones, that thing these people are worshipping, it's a statue of Mr. Spock. It cannot be, laddie. None of us have ever been within this solar system before. You have defiled the sacred soul of Onru. For that, Locke the Wise sentences you all to death. Classic Gold Key Comic Theater, Issue 17. Reenacting the scripts and the stories from your favorite Star Trek comic books. Performing at a level that few have ever stooped before. Captain's Log, Stardate 1924.3. In standard orbit around the uncharted planet, we have named Neeson. Our sensors and scanners have brought back strange tidings. You heard me right, people. There is intelligent life down there, but totally undeveloped. A planet in its Stone Age. We are under orders at all times not to interfere with the social and political structure of any planet. Outside the Federation. Of course, Captain. But in a world so young and impressionable, like a newborn babe, that admonition goes double. Aye, Captain. I see where your head's at. If we dropped even a button in the wee world like that, it could change their whole future history. All they could learn from you, Scotty, is how to play an electronic bagpipe. Mr. Spock, you will remain in command of the ship while we transport ourselves for a look below. As you wish, Captain. Let caution be your guide. Moments later, as the transporter rematerializes them on the planet's lush surface. Imagine it, men. We might be on hand to see these people invent the wheel, or... Wait, what's that? I cannot say, Captain. But it sounds like 10,000 Vulcan palm trees caught in a solar windstorm. Death to the invaders. The defilers of the sacred soil of Unaro must not escape. Fall back and protect yourselves. Use phasers. Stun power only. If we kill even one of these people, we'll answer for it. Good thing they haven't discovered gunpowder yet. They do not need it. If one of them clubs catches you on your noggin, you'll be wishing it was a wee bullet. Oh! They got bones. Cover me, Scotty. I'm going to pull them out of here. Aye, Captain. Ugh! Oof! We cannot make it, Jim. We're trying to run a tea party, and they're out for blood. You're right, Scotty. There's no choice but to surrender. Swiftly, the primitive men disarm the space voyagers. Of all the blasted luck, they took our communicators, too. And Mr. Spock is calling us. Eek? Captain Kirk, come in. Captain! Spirit voice in tiny box. We must kill evil spirit! They've learned to domesticate animals. They've learned how to bust heads, too. Man, I've got the granddaddy of all headaches. One day, they'll cut cross-sections from those logs, put a hole in the center, and they'll have the wheel. Who'd you suppose this Unruho character they mention is, Jim? The local chief? Do not take the name of Unruho in vain! 
Inside, there, you will stand before Luck the Wise. If Luck is a big man around here, who is on Ruro? Wrong, Bones. Locke is a woman. And what a woman. Silence in the presence of Luck the Wise. Luck the All-Seeing. Which is the one who had the box that talked? How did she know that? Nobody could have gotten here before us. I saw it, much of it, in the eye that lives within my head. She's telepathic or something. She can see things with her mind. No wonder she's the big chief. I sent the guards to capture you, for I could see you walking on the sacred soil of Unruho. And for that, there is but one penalty. Death. What? 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 Now we've had it, Jim. You should have let us fight before they tied us like nuts. You know our orders. No violence except as a last resort. Well, if this isn't a last resort, I've never seen one, Captain. Silence! We enter the sacred center of Anru. We stand before Anruho, spirit of all life, provider of all sustenance, commander of all destinies, bend to his wondrous might. Jim, do you see who... Yes, you fool, I see. Now shut up until we can find out what this is all about. Before Anruho stand three strangers who have defiled his sacred sight. Let them pay with their lives. If you still want to know what this is about, laddie, it's about our blood. Now, do we start fighting back? Oof! We do, Scotty, and how we do. As my old physiology professor used to say, you've got to use your heads, boys. Hold on, men. I've got my hands to fight with now. The best way to solve a naughty problem is to put a couple of heads together. Ugh. The power of evil makes them strong. Quickly, bring me back tree powder. Yes, my queen. I've got me weapon now. If you've never seen a Scotsman with a cudgel before, look out. Hey, lassie. What do you think you're doing there? Did you bring me some porridge? Bucky powder for the sleep of eternity. Hey, <coughs> that stuff, <coughs> it's get A knockout powder. <coughs> yeah. Quack. Next you wake, you will be in the halls of eternal rest. Then, as the first unconscious figure is placed before the execution block, let his death be a warning to all who defy the will of Unruho. Life to Unruho, death to all! Who soil his name? Yeah, the very air is alive with fire, and see a figure forms there. What power is this at work? Anruho, Anruho, he has come. Soon. Well, where are we, and why did they return our weapons? Well, you cannot look at these fair maidens without knowing. You're in heaven, man. Look at these brilliant examples of primitive art, inlaid with crudely cut jewels. They're like the cave paintings of Altamira, except these are brand new. Suddenly, as a majestic but strangely familiar figure appears. There's your answer as to why we're still alive. Be gone, maidens. And Ruro would like to talk to the infidels alone. Then, as Spock explains, Then, when I came looking for you, they greeted me as a god. Why, I don't know. How my face was carved here is beyond me. These are the Toll people. When their technology matches their art, they will make a great 
contribution to the universe. The Cavors, a more barbarous tribe, are about to attack. The Tolls don't stand a chance against them. And we're not allowed to help them, as Scotty said. Wait, where is Scotty? Scotty, it appears, is in good and beautiful hands. These are the crystal flowers of Amygda. Are they not lovely? Aye, but someday, lassie, I hope to get you to a field of heather. There's perfume for the gods. And these the golden fonts of Lido. If you could bottle that, you'd make a fortune in... Holy! There's the sound that chill a brave man's blood. The Kovars are here. Here is their advanced guard. They will slaughter us all. If there's many more like him, they just might do that, lassie. Captain's Log, Stardate 1924.5 For some unexplained reason, the told people of the planet Neeson believed Mr. Spock to be a god, which saved the rest of us from execution. But then we found ourselves in the middle of a war. Ooga! Faster, lassie. That fellow throws a mean spear. Aye! Go without me! Not on your life, or mine. That armored truck he's riding is too big to get through these woods. So that's where we're heading. Hang on. Later. That's all there is to it, men. We have to leave before the main battle breaks. Agreed. Otherwise, we would be involved against orders. But I can't deny my divinity now, or the tolls would kill us. Know this, toll people. I must depart with the others. But remember that I shall always be with you in your struggle to survive. I'm not one to run out on a lassie in her time of need, but I cannot do otherwise now. Go in peace. And love. Get a move on, Scotty. Moments later, aboard the starship. I don't mind admitting that I left the girl with a heavy heart. Yes, and a light weapon belt. She took your phaser, you fool. Aye, that's why she was so tender with me. And me thinking it was my fatal charm. She's a woman who would do anything to save her people, Scotty. A caveman with a phaser in his hands could command the whole world. We've broken our prime directive. Not if we can get that phaser back before it's used. Come on, Scotty. This is a two-man job. Moments later... We shouldn't be too far from the toll caves. Kovar... Mounted warriors headed this way. Hit the tall grass, Scotty. Have you learned something from this, Scotty, my boy? That fatal charm of yours might be fatal to nobody but you. They missed us, but now they're between us and the toll people. We have to get around them. The Kovar come! You must stand brave and tall against them, toll people. And remember, Anruho is with us! Kill! Kill the golden weaklings! Kill! See, our spears bounce from their beasts as from a rock. Yes, but not from Kovar flesh. They die as easily as we do. My people fight bravely, but they are doomed. The weapon I stole from the one called Scotty has a duty to perform, but it must not be wasted. It is to protect the sacred head of Anruho. Many a Kovar will die at my hands before they touch the idol. So, my beauty, all that sweet talk you made was only an excuse to rob me. Huh? I couldn't help myself. I'd do anything for my people. Even kill you if necessary. I? So that's where the wind is from, is it? Sorry about this, Loke. I. But it is done. 
on Ruho's idol will be destroyed by the Kovars. We can't help you there, Loke. It's against our direct orders. Let's go, Scotty. They're headed this way. I wish it could be otherwise less... Those strange ones. Stop them before they escape. Yes, Jibo. They shall be caught. They're gaining on us, Captain. Into that canyon, Scotty. That may be the answer. Now, with a little luck, I'm going to start a rock slide and close off the mouth of the canyon. Nice shooting, Captain. You did it, Captain. Close her up tighter than a drum. It'll take them six weeks to take through that. I guess we're safe enough, for now. But I don't mind saying that my knees were a little watery back there. Only two kinds of men never be frightened, Captain. Dead ones, and dumb ones. <clears throat> no Kovar warriors, attack! Hold on, Captain. I'm co- <sighs> Good. Strip them of all their weapons. And bring them before the chief. Meanwhile, what has got Mr. Spock so wrapped up in himself? Nothing much. Just that he stepped onto a world for the very first time and found he was a god there. That's all. I've got it. Those dinosaur like creatures on either side of the stone head. They and that woman mentalist. Loke. Huh? It was near the beginning of our mission for the Federation on the planet Dukar. It's a prehistoric world. No intelligent life yet. That shadow. What? Though we Vulcans are said to be developed beyond emotions, what I saw chilled my very bones. Giant prehistoric creatures. Don't even know if a phaser can stop it. Interference on my communicator. I can't get out a call for help. Somebody! Somebody! Anybody! Anybody! Help me! Help me! It was just an uncontrolled reaction. That mental cry for help. Then, as the phaser found a soft spot. In that second, when I sent out the uncontrolled thought message, Loke saw it. Right. She thought it was a vision of their god on Ruho, and she had them carve your head? I've got to tell Captain Kirk what I've learned. Captain Kirk, come in. Mr. Spock calling. Captain Kirk. Bring out the battering log and prepare to destroy that idol. Take warning. The wrath of Ruho will strike you down. Arr, arr. It is we who strike down Oruho. The execution fire is ready. Bring forth the strangers. Move! Die by flame or by spear point. It makes no difference to us. I'm afraid this is it, Captain. It would take Oruho himself to save us. Stop! The strangers must not be harmed. This is my only warning to you all. What? Anruho. He comes to save us. It is true. The god of the Toll people appears. Fools! Get off your knees. You will see how much a god can bleed and die. He doesn't believe Spock is supernatural, and Spock is under orders to harm none of them. Then he's finished, and well, next. Die! What? He vanishes before my eyes. Where did he go? I'm right here, my friend. See for yourself. Yes, I see you now. And this axe will find you next. You are a hard man to convince, Chief of the Kovars. Brilliant. Mr. Spock is using the transporter to flash back and forth between here and the ship. It's a great vanishing act. Oof. 
Here I am. Still, you do not believe, eh? You are flesh and blood, and I will prove it yet. Ugh! It is some magic. A trick by the strangers. Kill them! Let go of me, fools. No, Jibo. We have seen this on Brujo and his powers. It is you who are the fool. We have seen the might of Anruho. He has brought our people together. We shall live side by side in peace. Your message of love will be known to all the Toll and Kovar people. Together, we shall build a statue of you many times bigger than the first. No. Build no idols to me. The spirit of the universe is everywhere, in every form. And your finest worship lies in the deeds of your lives. Goodbye, Lassie. Perhaps the solar winds will blow our ship this way once again. No, I know we shall never again be like this. But for the special power of my mind, I will see you wherever you are. Take this poor gift, a crystal flower. I. It's starting to look prettier than all the heather ever grown. Later, I see your cave queen gave you a little posy by which to remember her, Mr. Scott. How touching. I'll touch your nose with my fist if you keep that up, Mr. Spock. You've been asking for this for a couple of light years now. All right, let's go. Fortunately, Mr. Scott, I don't gain the same delight from infantile violence as you do. Why do you? Break it up. Get back to your assigned positions. And the next one who pops off will be wiping pipes for a month in the nuclear furnace room. I kid you not. 